What's going on guys? It's your boy Lil Tiki Torch here with another Dr. Stone anime review. We're doing season two, episode eleven. This one's actually going to be the final episode for season two. So um I do have to say I think I was pretty on the nose with the prediction. I was thinking I was off on the last vid. Uh just by actually you know I was probably off by a little bit, but uh I was pretty on the nose with it. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and hit that like button, that sub button, and leave a comment below. Uh, it just lets me know that I'm doing okay, and lets me know how these anime reviews are doing, alright? So, alright, let's go ahead and roll that intro. Alright, Dr. Stone Season 2, Episode 11, title was prologue and the episode was filled with the feels uh, i had a scary thought that they were actually going to make the prologue into basically a ton of fillers to explain the backstories of the characters and i'm so glad that i was wrong on that uh the beginning starts where we left off with uh sukasa senku and uh hyoga after the fight and actually there was another one there that we didn't see but homura was there also so uh i had a comment on the last video that said that homura and uh Hyoga uh, knew each other, but we'll get into that later. Um, but when I saw her, I was kind of like, what? Like, how did she even get there? I actually was really surprised that she even knew where she, where he was. How she knew where he was that quick? Crazy. Obviously, we know that she is not only just a tracker, but she's also extremely fast. And I think she actually has maybe hearing on par with uh, Yukio. So... I don't know, I'll be interested to see how that develops later on. Uh, we see that she's there, right? And now that Senku and Tsukasa have defeated Hyoga, they now have to take Hamura and as a captive as well, right? Because they don't have a choice. He's defeated, he's knocked unconscious, take him in, um, so that they don't have them running around and, you know, trying to take over the village. Um, but after they are in the cells and Kohaku is bringing them food we hear homura say that she is happy to be next to kyoga so um to the person that uh left that comment and said yo they definitely had something in the past thank you for that that was crazy the that was a great prediction or great you know uh perception that you saw you know you definitely cut your eye out for that one and that was pretty cool because i was like wow that dude was definitely right whenever i was watching him like that dude's definitely right that's crazy i didn't i didn't see that part um, I definitely must not have been paying close attention at the time when Hyoga and Homura were first introduced. They gave me a different look on how the relationship may develop or what could possibly happen later on. Um, with that being said, I'm definitely interested in finding out what they're really up to and what his next plan is going to be. Uh, I think in the next season, um, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to see how that develops. Uh, I think they'll have to start doing like kind of uh, two... Uh, stories there in a way you know one for the Ishigami village back home and then obviously one for Senku's uh, adventure to um, try and find uh, the, his destination um, now to the point of the episode that I like is where we have Senku asking Yuzihara to use her skills from high school at the sewing club to help stitch up Tsukasa so that they could hopefully hold off the fear of death for a couple more days um Tsukasa knows what they're doing and he ultimately knows what's going on with his body he's very in tune with it he's very aware of what happens inside with his body with his organs etc and I don't know a lot of people will be like you can never feel this you'd never know that but there are a lot of people that have that mind to muscle or mind to body ratio to where they very are they're very in touch with their body and know if they're dying or know if something's wrong or know if they have certain infections and he knew after being stitched up, either just by his body or just being, you know, modern era, you know, high school alpha primate, know-it-all, strongest dude type person, that he was going to die from sepsis. And that Senku knew that. And I think by letting Senku know, hey, you know, man, uh, thank you for the stitching. Uh, thank you for the blood transfusion. Yes, he had a blood transfusion. It was pretty crazy. Uh, Kazuki was there, too. With added blood transfusion, going at an IV with a pot uh, with blood in it. And uh, <laughs> that's when they asked Yuzihara to, to stitch him up. But after that, he, he knew that uh, he knew that he was going to he was going to die. And Senku knew that, too. 
and with them both knowing this, they, you know, started to make plans and and uh, get their affairs kind of in order. And Senku wanted to make a refrigeration unit, that way he could flash freeze him and hopefully be able to petrify the body enough to hopefully, I guess, save it, preserve it, and then use the petrification light to petrify Tsukasa in order to heal the damage that had been done to his body and hopefully revive him and reverse the, effect, the effects of death and reverse the effects of the asepsis. Kuhaku was also sitting with Mirari at one point, uh, just kind of looking out over the edge, and Mirari was really worried, and she was trying to say, you know, don't worry, Senku's the strongest, most patient man in the world that we have today, and if anyone can do it, he can do it, and, you know, he'll never stop, you know, that's what's great about science, and I thought that was really, um, what is it, I guess somber, uh, or cumbersome? Uh, cause we have Mirari, who is the new generation now, and her older brother, who is technically the older generation, who is now passing away, and she just was revived to see her brother, who just had to sacrifice himself in order to save her, because of, uh, Kyoka. So, after seeing him flash frozen, and, you know, having the tear-ups, and having the strong feels, and all that, I realized that uh, Kuhaku's really starting to show the true admiration that she has for Senku, and I really like that, even though we already know that they, they've already been, you know, pretty much shipped. Uh, I think it's really cool that we're, we're seeing that, you know, we're, we're starting to see the growth of that, and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a fun ride, I think, with, uh, with seeing that, but, um, yeah, with seeing, uh, Tsukasa in that, <coughs> seeing, uh, Tsukasa in that, uh, coffin, was um definitely surreal i guess <laughs> a little a little dramatic i guess but uh definitely a surreal moment you definitely realize that he's he's gone now he's not coming back for a while and hopefully we get to see sukasa come back and meet at a reunite once again i really would like to see that i hope the story goes that far but i am excited to see where this new season three is going to leave us uh we left season two with a mysterious statue standing in the forest. And I don't know if this mysterious forest is on the way to their destination. Like if it's on another island, like once they land there, then boom, they got it. Or if this person is in the forest that's on the way to either a boat that's already been built or they just discover it through finding the materials to build the boat. But either way, I'm definitely interested to see who this person is and definitely interested to see how this story is going to take place. Now, with that being said, we see that they are taking off to go towards the green light um, to try and find that origin point of the green light flash so that they get get that power in hopes to figure out how to recreate it so they can save Su uh, Sukaza. Um, if they can do this, they get to save him. Now, it's going to be really interesting to see how they harness this power and how they're going to actually utilize this and how they're going to be able to control this power because they're going to have to have something that makes it into a beam of some sort, almost like a flashlight that they showed in the example um, when they were doing the science explanation that they normally use the Senku bot for. So if we could, if they use that exact method, which is the flashlight method, I think it, it'll work. But if they have to find something else or if it's you know something bigger than what they really are thinking it is, then... Um, they're going to have to find another way to, to figure this out, and it might take them a little bit longer, actually. Um, but again, this season was awesome. Season 2 was absolutely awesome. I loved the way that they left it. The cliffhanger was awesome. Um, hats off again to the art team. They're doing an amazing job, and the writers are also doing an amazing job, too. The voice actors 
They are champs at conveying these emotions. I really can't wait to see what the next season will bring since the episode ends the way that it did. I'm, I'm interested to see if they're going to make this into a, like a One Piece style. I think they will. I think the cracks on their faces and now we're implementing a pirate scene. I think we're going to start seeing more of like a One Piece reference or like a One Piece kind of um, scenario going. So um, I think this is going to be cool and uh, I can't wait to see what happens. But uh, other than that, until next time, guys, it's your boy Little Tiki Torch and I hope you enjoyed the vid. Leave a comment down below for how the season was for you. Let me know. Did you think season two was dope or did you not like it at all? And let me know what you think about season three, what, what uh, you think will happen next. Other than that, you guys have a great weekend, a great week if I don't see you. Until the next video, thank you for watching.